What's going on, everybody? It's How To Tuesday, and today we have my friend Tony Young here. He is an advanced spear fisherman with a charter service in the Florida Keys, and we're going to talk today about safely uh, beginning spear fishing and also learning how to hold your breath longer. Because if you can hold your breath longer, you're going to be more uh, successful in the water shooting fish. You're basically hunting. The longer you can stay down there, the better you're going to do. So, Tony, what can you tell us about uh, how someone would would improve their their breath hold and do that safely? And if there are any other resources or anything that you could kind of steer steer people to that they could learn more about this, uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for having me, Tom. Super excited to talk about it. Um, so for, well, for free diving now is a great time to get into it if you're not already, because there's a lot of resources available. Like, uh, there's a lot of classes, um, that are kind of mainstream now. So my first recommendation would be to join a level one free dive course. There's a couple different agencies. One of the largest being Patty, which if you're a scuba diver, it's an easy transition into free diving. Um, and then there's a bunch of other organizations as well, but the level one course is a basics on just like really body physiology, like what your body is capable of. And it's really like mind opening just to be like, you know, we are made to be in the water. There's things that our bodies do that we're not even aware of. Um, and it just unlocks that. And then it also teaches the safety. So, uh, you just like with free diving, you are holding your breath. You're going underwater. Obviously you can't get a breath under there. So understanding the safety and what your, what your body's going through on that dive is extremely important. Um, so the level one course is, is great. Uh, usually between like 350 to 550 bucks, it takes two days. Mm-hmm. So, and from there you got your water entry technique. You understand the equipment that you're going to be using. You understand the body physiology. You understand some of the training that goes on and believe it or not, that course generally yields um, like a 50 to 66 foot depth. So that, that course trains you up to 66 feet is that cert limit, but that's where most people will reach in their first course. So that's a great starting point. Um, and then from there, there's a level two and a level three. So you're just building up on that. Um, so that's kind of like the, the, the way to get into it. Um, it, I mean, if you're living by the water, obviously just being in the water and diving with your buddies and, you know, doing the course and going out with your buddies is a good way to practice. But for most of us, when you, if you want to really train for it and uh, let's say you are an, uh, a free diver and you're looking to, you know, break that hundred foot mark or trying to break a two minute breath hold underwater or something. Um, what I do that has been most helpful outside of the level one, two, three free diving structured courses is, um, I, I really enjoy running. I mean, Tom and I've talked about that. Um, your, your body, your cardiovascular system has to be operating as efficient as possible. So if you're trying to extend your breath hold, it really comes down to how efficient is your body exchanging oxygen within itself. Um, and how is your CO2 tolerance of your body? So if you do run a lot, one transition you might make is to breathing through your nose. Um, that's going to restrict your breathing and actually feel kind of claustrophobic in the beginning. But as you condition towards it, you'll notice that, uh, you can run your heart rate will drop way down on your runs. You're going to be able to run longer and you'll be running more efficiently. Um, the air is going to be a little restricted at first, but it's going to allow the CO2 to climb in your body. It's going to dilate your blood vessels. It's going to allow the oxygen to bind and flow through your muscles more efficiently. And you're going to be maximizing each breath. Um, one of the books that I've been reading or read and really enjoyed that I told you about Tom is the book, uh, it's called breathe or, uh, by James Nestor. Yeah. So that's a great book. It's an audio book. Um, it really breaks this down in amazing way. Uh, it goes about like the formation of like our current respiratory system, how we developed what we have and good and bad and how to make, you know, adjustments even overnight within. That's, so that's super cool. That is a, I've heard so much about that book and, uh, my son read that, read that book and was telling me all about it. And, and I'll definitely put it on my list as well. Um, that that's a really good one. There's a couple others, uh, the oxygen advantage. I'm going to send you, uh, some of these other ones too, but the oxygen yep. advantage is one that he, he specifically talks. I mean, there's like more than one chapter in there about breathing through your nose and how you can 
do that in all types of training, even if you're just riding a bicycle or, or a stationary bicycle or running or walking or like even CrossFit where you're, you purposefully are breathing only through your nose. And for a while, your performance is going to go down until you start to get used to it. And then you're going to see yourself right. climbing back and you're able to go at the same um, intensity that you were before but you're doing it with less oxygen and then you just kind of develop another gear is what he's talking about in that book, which is really, really interesting. And then, you know, people are taping their mouth. Now there's like something out there called hostage tape where they're taping their mouth when they're running. Yep. They talk and, about that too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And my, that's my son, a, that's pretty aggressive, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, but it gets, it gets the point through for sure. Yeah. You and know. so what about, uh, like, are there ways that you can train on uh, dry ground uh, as far as breath hold goes to improve your breath hold? Um, you were mentioning some apps when we were talking earlier, uh, and what those are. Right. Yeah. So, so if you're, so the first benchmark is kind of going through the, the formal training, just to understand free diving, breathing, our body physiology, and then just general getting in shape, like running and doing stuff to strengthen your cardiovascular system. And then once that becomes just a routine that you're going, that you're done, um, and you really want to push specifically into free dive breath hold, there are a number of apps, or you can just look on, like look up like CO2 tables for free diving. And it's something that, uh, you're going to be doing out of the water. So you're not doing this in your bathtub, in your pool, like this, like you do this on the couch. Um, and it can only take a few minutes of the day. So it essentially runs through, like, you, you'll kind of have your base breath hold, say it's a minute or 30 seconds, and then it'll track your prog progress. And it's going to be a series of like, say a minute breath hold or sorry, minute breathe up breathing, uh, and then 30 second breath hold, then maybe like 40 second breathe up. 45 second breath hold. And what it's doing is it's trying to build up your body's tolerance for CO2, um, in a safe way over time. And you'll see that your breath hold will easily extend over time. Um, and I think more importantly, uh, than even just your body is that your brain is the biggest thing for you. I mean, you know, that when we were talking about marathons and just hunting in general is like, what's going to kill you the most is your, is your brain and how your attitude is in the water. So when you're diving, if you have that time on the couch and just know, be like, well, I, I can hold my breath for, you know, this much time, then you know that that can be translated to in the water, at least a portion of it. Um, so there are a lot of apps available, a lot of information out there. And that's like running those CO2 tables. You can do that on your own is a great way to start out after the course. Awesome. Awesome. So there's a lot of resources for you. If you're interested in, in the free diving, or if you're already a free diver and you're interested in getting interested in getting better, uh, all of those resources are available. You could also go with Tony and if they were to, uh, book a trip with you, uh, how would they do that? Yeah, absolutely. So you can check us out online. We're forever young spear fishing. Um, uh, Instagram is captain Tony young. Uh, you can hit me up there. Otherwise, just uh, shoot an email at diveyoung.com or my number is 305-680-8879. We'd love to spend some time with you guys on the water and we enjoy working with uh, advanced level spear fishermen as well as beginners. All right. All right. That's Tony Young from Forever Young. And that is How To Tuesday for this week. We'll see you next week with another awesome tip. See you.